Oh, time for listener Instagram questions, which I'm very excited about, but I was about to go film and we biked in a torrential rainstorm yesterday and this thing is not working. Struggles biking in the tropics. It's gonna be raining every day from here on out. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I have a phone. So we just move on. And I wrote down the questions on my computer. Let's answer them. iPhone video. Benjamin Bunny asks, tips for practicing a raw till four diet. It's the diet that I prefer. I love it when I have access to fruit. I like to eat it all morning and afternoon and then a nice high carb meal for dinner. Tips, supposing that you like live in a house or apartment and have a kitchen, would be buy bananas by the case. Go to your local grocery store. They'll sell you a case of bananas, 40 pounds. Let them ripen up, throw them in the fridge that you can make smoothies with different fruit because sometimes you, you don't have access to ripe fruit. So if you have your supply of frozen bananas, you know you always have a meal. Um, sevenhotdates.com or buy dates in your local area if you have good dates. That'll help you just to make sure you always have food because a lot of people want to go raw till four and they live in a place that doesn't cater to good raw food and like eating shitty out of season watermelon and strawberries is just not gonna cut it if the fruit doesn't taste good it's not good fruit and you shouldn't be eating it you're much better having oatmeal and not being raw till four than eating like crappy unripe fruit so if you want to do it Ripen your bananas. You can find bananas everywhere. So you have your smoothies. Um, and then, you know, make sure to eat enough. And for dinner, uh, change it up, switch it up. Have rice one night, have sweet potatoes another night. Supposing you're doing no oil, raw till four style. You, you have so many different lentils, green lentils, French lentils, red, uh, you know, red lentils, pinto beans, black beans, garbanzo beans, sweet potato, switch it up, try fun things. And if you're having a hard time eating such a simple diet, like without oil and stuff like that, if you eat more stimulating foods and you're like, oh, I just don't get satisfied off of fruit, it means you probably need to go on some sort of island. Maybe do a little detox, do a banana island for four days. It might suck for you, but then after that, you'll have so much more much more enjoyment eating these foods that maybe right now in your life you find boring, but if you kind of cleanse your palate and then go back into eating raw till four, that might be easier. So go on a little detox, go on a little banana island if it's hard for you to eat so cleanly. Sea Spoons asks, what do you think about water fasting? I think water fasting, there's a lot of science to say that it's a really good and healthy thing to do if you are trying to heal or cure something. It's not something to just do just to randomly do it. It's where you only drink water for a period of time and don't eat food. Uh, there's a lot of studies and data and just testimonials to show that if you're, you have a autoimmune disease, some chronic thing bothering you, muscular, really like anything, migraines, whatever. If you stop eating food and don't go exercise, don't go work your job, just rest for a period of multiple days, your body, instead of having to work to digest food all day, every day, it's able to heal the things that it didn't have time to heal before. So I am pro water fasting only if you're doing it in a safe way. If you have no idea what you're doing, don't do it by yourself, go do it professionally. If you have researched and looked online and think you can do it for a couple days on your own, you can do it. Don't go out and exercise. Um, if you're feeling crazy, terrible, eat some food. Um, and I've never done it myself, but I've just heard so many good things about it. So I think it is a smart, healthy thing to do, but only if you have a serious problem that you need to heal. Um, my friend Lauren Leshrick on Instagram asks, what country are you most excited for after Mexico? Probably Nicaragua y Costa Rica. I mean, so many. I'm excited for uh, Panama and Colombia. I've been hearing such good things about Colombia, but more in the near future, Nicaragua and Costa Rica. I got a buddy in Nicaragua who lives on this turtle sanctuary, helping sea turtles get to the ocean and not be, or little hatchlings and not be taken by poachers to sell in the town. I can't wait to go volunteer and work with him there. And then Costa Rica, there's something in my heart that says that I'm gonna live in Costa Rica at some point. So I'm excited for that. Um, Saponeto asks, do you miss home? That's a great question. 
I'm zero miss home. I do not, home meaning Los Angeles, home meaning Colorado. I assume you mean Los Angeles where I lived for my first 18 years. I don't miss it whatsoever. Sure, I miss my friends and my family at times and things like that, but I'm able to FaceTime and call them. Do I miss physically being in Los Angeles or in California in general? Not at all. Maybe I'm weird about that. I am so much happier traveling and living in these interesting, more just authentic real life places than California or the United States at all. Like honestly guys, I don't think I'll be back in the United States for a really long time if everything goes my way with visas and stuff like that, which who knows. Um, Isabel Foy asks, if you were a woman, do you think you'd be traveling in this way? It's a very good question. Um, I think yes. I think there are women that have traveled much more badassly than the way even I do. I heard a story about a woman from someone recently um, who biked all of Africa by herself. That seems pretty much more intense than biking Mexico and Canada and the US and some Asian countries, which is what I've done so far. But to be totally honest, like many nights when I'm just camping on this, in an abandoned building and, you know, biking in a small place and there's just some dudes with machetes on the side of the road. I think about that sometimes. Like I am privileged to be a six foot two, pretty big bearded man with a dog. And would I be doing it if I was a woman? Hopefully the answer is yes. But am I scared, honestly, right now thinking of a female doing what I do? Yeah. And maybe that there's some prejudice and some just sexism there, um, but it's just from my safety, like just just thinking about it. I want to say yes, and you should do it if you are called to do it, but I think it definitely, there's some percentage point that helps people not messing with me because I'm a dude. Let's just keep it real. But no, I, women, women can fucking do it too. Remember... If you dig my videos, if you like my traveling lifestyle, if it inspires you, if you like that I spread the vegan message into towns and places where people will never probably hear the vegan message without internet, without any vegans rolling through their tiny ranch towns, I'm the guy that bikes around with my dog and inspires people and spreads the vegan message. So if you want me to keep doing that, I need your support on Patreon. It's literally the only way that I make money these days so that I can keep traveling. Once that dries up, I gotta go do something else. So if you want me to keep going and if you dig my videos, please support our lifestyle on Patreon. Just pledge $1, $2, $5 per month. It's very cheap, but when all you guys do that together, I'm able to continue living this way. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Much love, Dream Extreme.